Hello and welcome to another video. So I haven't covered a lot of mid-range shadow builds, at least not for a while, because most of them have been extremely legendary heavy and this deck isn't much of an exception. It is running 8 legendaries, which honestly isn't a bad number as both Gremory and Fairy in this variation of deck aren't key cards, they're not huge keys to winning. Mainly Cerberus and Demon Lord will be a massive win condition. Cerberus I found is much bigger at the moment than Demon Lord. You may even get away with two Demon Lords and like two Gremory as they do serve a very similar role, but overall this does a wonderful job in the current Unlimited meta and is just doing amazingly. It is actually ranked as one of the tier 1 Unlimited meta decks, so definitely a solid one still and we're going to get right into it and check it out. So as you'll see, the Cerberus plays are definitely going to be the biggest ones for this deck, being able to just absolutely flood the board with Shadow Followers and give them some nice ping damage is an amazing effect. And Haven usually is a reasonably negative matchup for me when I'm playing Shadow, but in this situation it's going to be actually fairly decent. And Lady of Grey is still such an amazing card, you really can't fault it, there's like zero faults to the card, which is kind of a bad thing. I mean, it's great that it has no faults when you're playing the deck, but as soon as you go to go up against Shadow, it's a nightmare card, as it just has really no big drawback and no real flaw to it. So kicking us off early is nice. Unfortunately, Black and Scripture is a little bit of a pain. But at least we have a few cards we can mess around with. So Golden Cities. Some removal isn't bad, which is good because now our Lady Grey actually has a target. It would have been pretty useless if we had have played it and didn't have a target as Bellinus was banished. But at least this way it has something to bring back. And we now have a pretty decent board. I actually prefer this over an Atomy build, which is a lot of fun, and actually still prefer this over an Arcus build as I really don't enjoy that and that's a lot more legendary heavy. So we can use our removal while at the same time gaining some board. I can also use the uh, France Attendant pretty effectively with Cerberus, along with Demon Lord. It's actually a very strong card for those sort of plays. And especially since I kind of expected Decree to get played, at least holding on to it gives us something to use. So with Cerberus, Skull Beast, and Franz Attendant, we're actually going to have an extremely powerful board. And even if they do use some kind of heavier removal, we've actually got a pretty decent play in a Franz Monster Girl as well. As we're going to be able to use that to pretty much restock our hand, which didn't even last that long as our opponent does just end up conceding off that as they obviously didn't have another removal card. Then for our next game we actually have a Shadow vs Shadow matchup. To be fair this is a mid Shadow vs Atomy Shadow so it's definitely a different kind, it's not a full on mirror, although they do run a very similar base engine to them so it's not a big surprise. France Monster Girl actually isn't a bad kind of uh, Skull Ringish replacement, I guess. It's not great by any means, but it's still two bodies, so I could definitely see why Atomy would want to run something like that overall, but it definitely works better in this mid rangey deck, I feel. Skull Ring getting kind of nerfed really did ruin the Atomy synergy, so they definitely don't have that big turn 3 play. Hmm, Demon Eater. Not a surprise there. We don't have a great turn 3, so going for the draw off our Demon Eater is going to be fairly decent. And we do end up with picking up an extra Lurching Corpse. Definitely not bad. Grammary Soul Conversion, so they're looking for their own draws, trying to get as much as they can into their hand. We end up with our own Soul Conversion. Not a card we need right now, but definitely a nice one to have. And there's their own Lurching Corpse, plus their Lady Grey. But we're looking for a pretty nice turn going forward. I mean, our Cerberus with an Evo is going to be a very, very good. So I do aim for a bit of decent RNG here with the Demon Eater. Unfortunately, we kind of miss. Not that it's a huge deal, it's just a little disappointing. If I had have got the hit on the Cerberus, it would have been a much better play. Oh, I'm sorry, on the Lady Grey, I would have been able to get that ping off. 
And we would have actually been able to clear two of the three instead of just leaving up these, so... It was a little disappointing. So this is how they're going to uh, push their atomy out. It's definitely a good way to do it. Unfortunately for them, the Lurching Corpse is left up, which means they're going to lose this atomy immediately. And we're basically going to heal back up, so we're both on equal footing again, but I am on the play. Which with a Cerberus and a Skull Beast, we're going to be able to flood the board pretty quickly again. There's just not a lot they can do against this now. So we're stacking a pretty decent board. I mean, we've already got what's pretty nuts here. Nine damage just off this play alone. And they're still digging for cards, which is a good sign. They might be running a path to Purgatory, potentially. Not that that would be a problem. So we're just going to wipe their board out, stop them from getting any kind of crazy turn 7 play. Plus it didn't really cost us anything, as all it really did was let us put a 5-3 on board. Ooh, Hinterland Ghoul, not something you see a lot. So that one's pretty nuts. Definitely got to be a PTP build. Which isn't the most optimized of lines to go with, but it's not bad either. So we're actually one damage short here, but thanks to Soul Conversion on our puppy there, we're going to be able to get the extra two damage. So Soul Conversion definitely came in handy in that kind of a mid to late game-ish area, being able to just use it to get that extra ping. So this is some of the most fun I've had with Shadow for a little while, honestly. Shadow is just one of those decks that I've either been had exactly the right cards to build a deck with, or I've been lacking in, which is unfortunately. Honestly, it's always going to be probably Forest, then Dragon, and then Shadow in the ways that I'm lacking cards. With, of course, Forest lacking the most, Shadow lacking the least of those three, but it's still a fun deck. It, this does really well. It's not super expensive. I mean, if you already have Demon Lords from the past, Cerberus, I mean, if you're playing any kind of Shadow, is a must-craft. Fairy Spirit Maiden is a one-of, and Grimmery is a one-of. Aren't too expensive as far as they go. And everything else is a pretty generic Shadow card that most people would have, especially if you are interested in playing any kind of Unlimited deck. So definitely recommend giving this a go if you've got the cards to do it. Otherwise, I'm not really sure how you want to go unless you're really into Unlimited and looking for some really quick wins. This deck really does that job nicely. So until next time, deck list in the description below. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe for more content. See ya.